Hi and welcome to my office. Today's subject is all about having a flash on the camera and off the camera for taking photographs of birds in a forest environment. Avoiding steely eyes if we possibly can. Alright, so before we get started, I'll just point something out to you. Now I am terrible at pointing at things around me that I can't see properly having to look at the monitor but somewhere up there is a blue book owl a male blue book owl him and his partner have been coming into this nice little fern forest that's in my reserve that's one of three fern forests but they prefer this one so quite they've been coming here for quite some years now he's all alone because it's breeding season and a female somewhere in a hollow close by there's a few hollow trees along the bank, just at the back here. I don't know which one she's in, but I'm going to come out just before sunset tonight, so just before dusk, and see if I can see her flying out, and hopefully I can get it on film if I'm lucky enough. All right, let's talk about having a flash on the camera for daytime birds. Do I get steely eyes? No, never. It's never been a drama for me. And uh, here's 101 photographs I've taken with the flash on the camera. So there you go, there's no red eye, there's no steely eye. Um, it, I never have an issue with daytime birds with a flash on the camera. All I'm simply doing is having my camera set up for an action shot. Bird comes onto a branch, you've got split seconds to do it. It doesn't tell you it's going to do these things. You can read its body language and hopefully it's going to do what you think it's going to do that we can't be mucking around with the camera. Everything has to be set up properly to alleviate mucking around, trying to set things up. Oh, too late, it's gone. All right, so camera's in manual mode. I have my shutter speed set to a thousandth of a second to freeze the action. Don't want any blurring of the wings or anything like that. I'm not going to be arty. I simply want to freeze it in time so you can see this bird sitting on a branch, exactly how I saw it. Right, so my aperture will be the only thing that I'll play with up and down for different distances that the bird's at because I know with the power of the flash that I have it set to that I need to close the iris and as it goes further away I need to open it. So it's at five metres, I know I need my aperture open as fully as this flash, this flash, got a flash on the brain, my lens aperture will open up to. My uh, ISO is set to a thousand, and this is the 7D Mark II, we don't get noise at a thousands ISO, I know it works with the power that I'm going to have my flash on, that that is how I'm going to be setting up this camera. Right, so we've looked at that and the only thing that I'll play with is the aperture ring as my subject is up close or further away. It's all about practicing and learning about the different distances with the power that you've got the flash set to, what you need to do with that aperture. All right, so moving on to the flash. Manual mode, so that we have control. That's what manual mode is for. We have control over how the camera works. We don't want the camera to tell us 
what it needs to do because we already know. We know that those settings on the camera work well and I know that if I set this flash which is the 600 EX second generation that if I have that on full power, it's going to be far too much for a subject that's five metres away. So I need to keep it down around half power. And it stays there. That, that's how I'm going to have it set up. Now, so that my flash is set up with the sync speed of my shutter at a thousandth of a second, if I don't have it set to high power, that's the H with the lightning bolt on it, signature, if I didn't have it on that, it would override my shutter speed and go to 250th or 200th of a second. I don't want that. I don't want it to go into an automatic TTL mode. So it's on manual mode, high speed curtain sync, set to around half power. I know I'm right, I'm set up. I don't have to think about things anymore. As I said, I never have a problem with steel eyes. It just doesn't happen. But, talking about our friend up here, it does happen because the irises are wide open. Now I'm walking around with a spotlight on. That does help to close their eyes down, so you can take a photograph. Uh, tawny frog mouse, well here's a photograph, with spotlight on it, so the camera can focus and flash going off on the camera. No steely eyes, I didn't have a problem. But in a controlled environment, like I have here, where the bird's not moving, it's sitting there, it's not gonna go anywhere, this is how I set up. So here's something I prepared earlier of how I went about taking a photograph of this young man. So controlled environment, so I don't hold it and uh, worry about not having it on exactly the right angle. I simply put it on the tripod. I forgot to bring the uh, bracket for that so I could put it on the tripod properly. So I've simply just taped it on. I've improvised. All about improvising with photography. There's always some DIY project uh, waiting to happen. So there it is, so I just got the angle right, set it up in front of me so that it's on a different angle to the camera and I get a beautiful photograph. But let's have a look at the difference between having a flash on, so we're getting steely eyes, and then one with a flash being off the camera. Big difference, isn't it? So just changing the angle doesn't have to be a long way away from the camera, it just has to be off the camera on a slight angle and it'll alleviate those red eye. But having a torch on them as well to make them close down that iris is a big deal as well. You know, that can work pretty good. If you've got a really powerful uh, headlamp like I have, spotlight, it's pretty good and it works. Right, I think I've uh, explained how to go about to using flashes and um, not getting steely eyes and all this sort of stuff. So I've wirelessly connected these two together, I've put it away and it just worked beautiful. So there you go, that's all I've got for you today. If you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at my channel, there's over 60 different videos to choose from there. Me talking about camera accessories, cameras, video cameras, audio equipment, birds in flight, flash photography, you name it, it's there. Go and have a browse, there'll be something here of interest to you, I'm sure. Now I've also written some books on the Agile Antichinus, which is a carnivorous marsupial, my passion in life. So if you'd like to go and have a browse and have a look at those books, uh, you can actually look at a few pages. So I'll give you the links down below in the descriptions. You can also get them as an e-book. Right, so uh, I also have started up another channel on YouTube. I'm a handyman in all aspects of my life. I've been in the building trade for 40 odd years. I've learned a lot and it's my trade. It's I'm a handyman, carpenter, plumber, you name it, that's me. 
there's a link just there if you want to know about patching holes in plaster the non-fuss way quick easy and get the job done in one day rather than in a whole week go to, and I'm terrible at pointing like I've already said but just here somewhere be a link to that channel gonna browse and uh, there'll be more DIY stuff coming in the future that's all I've got for you today so just remember if you don't do you don't get so get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife See ya. Well, I consider myself pretty fortunate. One night to find the boo book where it's nesting. Awesome. The male was over there just as the sun started going down. So we just got past twilight. He started calling. Another boo book owl turned up over there. We flew up and they greeted each other. Then they flew over to the tree just behind me here about 20 meters up and another boobook owl came out of the must be a hole at the back that's where it's nesting and um wow <laughs> amazing one night awesome well hi i'm doing a selfie with the 7d mark ii and i've got my headlamp on top of the camera and all i can see is two lights so i have no idea whether i'm I'm actually looking at the lens or not but anyway I'm sitting on the side of a cliff on the opposite side to where I was last night when I was trying to find out where the beeble cow was nesting so now I'm in a really good spot I'm actually a bit closer because I'm up just below it where it is actually up there let's see if I can get you to look up there you might be able to see it well no idea <laughs> what you're seeing oh and I can hear it they're coming I better get ready all right sit down beside me and we'll watch the show <laughs> 